along the banks of the Ohio River in the bluegrass state of Kentucky. The Professional Women's Bowling Association makes its first ever stop in the river city of Louisville, Kentucky. Welcome to the Executive Bowl in Louisville for the Lady Ebonite Classic. Hello everyone, I'm Leandra Riley and I am joined once again by Jan Smith. And what a talented field we have. This has got to be the most talented field in the television finals of 1998. Well, they sure have the hot hands right now. In fact, five of our last seven events have been won by this group of ladies. Let's start at the top. Michelle Feldman, not only is she on top with her game, but she has led all week. She's only 22 years old. Oh, and she was so dominant. No one could touch her, but she's only been in this position once before. She did win, though, so look out. What a summer it has been for Kim Adler. Last week, she had to climb the ladder. She won it all. This week, she's number two. And going for back-to-back -back titles, she did it in 1996. If she gets to that final game, I think she has a good shot because she's 8-1 lifetime in the championship match. Our field includes two southpaws. The number three qualifier is Dee Dee Davidson. And she's having, I would say, her best year of her career. She's made four of the last seven shows. And I'll tell you, I think it's because she's relaxed, having fun, and that's a dangerous combination for her competitors. Now, the other southpaw is Alita Sill. And if she should win, she will grab sole possession of the career titles record. Right now, she has 30 career titles, something she shares with Lisa Wagner. Well, the other career record she's after is to be the first woman to reach a million dollars. She's well on pace. She's number one this year in earnings with over $91,000. And our fifth qualifier is Marianne DeRupo. She's among the league leaders in the top eight of every statistical category the PWBA keeps stats in. And she showed us why last night. When the heat was on, she came through. She shot 266 in the position round to take that fifth spot from Lisa Bishop. Okay, it's time to say let's bowl in Louisville. It's Marianne DeRupo against Alita Sill. Tonight's Lady Ebonite Classic will be using lanes 17 and 18. Marianne DeRupo will bowl first. Marianne, the number five qualifier. It was Alita's choice. She's going to have Marianne start. the 31-year-old from Susquehanna, New Jersey. Now, Alita Sill, as I mentioned, she is one of two lefties. 18 years she's been on the tour. She is from Dearborn, Michigan. DeRupo stands 5'7". Alita Sill stands 5'8". And you talked about Alita Sill trying to break that record she's tied for. It's Lisa Wagner going for 31 titles tonight. Great opening shot. Lisa's sitting right next to us here doing staff, and I, I want to know who she's rooting for. Right now, she's remaining impartial, she said. She's just doing her scores and her staff, and doesn't get any closer than this. Both women opening with perfection. Well, Lita still made a run just to be in the show. Shot 275 over last night just to make the telecast. You saw the numbers that she already met to Marianne DeRupo and, and won. And she sort of had an up and down time in the rounds, going 7th, 14th, 16th, 12th, 7th, and then finally 4th and 4th. Of course, that's how she positioned. As we look at Marianne DeRupo, let's take another look at Alita Sill's second strike. This is a shot she just made. She's playing up about the first arrow. Ball coming in real late here, but driving through hard. She looks to have a nice shot. Scores were pretty high this week. Most of the players, all of them that made the telecast, were lined up and had a good shot. It was a question of carry. Oh, nobody's yielding anything here. Lane 17 and 18 are playing evenly for both of our bowlers, even though one's a lefty and one's a righty. Interesting, though, you say playing evenly, but I talked to Marianne right before the match, and she told me for her the left lane was way tighter than the right lane. She had a lot harder time getting the ball to break on the left lane. So keeping an eye, it does appear she's using the same ball, though. But we'll keep an eye if she starts to have trouble. She's one who will very quickly go to using one ball on each lane. Well, the crowd is energized as Marion DeRupo has three, the turkey, and Alita Sill is working on two. 
Hmm, MasterCard bonus could be in jeopardy tonight. Instantly. $50,000 to the bowler who bowls a perfect game on television. You were talking about the average is 221 for Sill, and that's, a, that's an impressive number. And in fact, she was sixth in average, but because her match play record was six and an eight, she was able to make the telecast as a number four. Okay, now we finally see somebody leave one standing. Well, she told us that Carrie had been tough for her, and the reason she finally bowled so well last night is she was able to find the combination to carry. She had a little bit more back end. The ball drove through the pins a little harder, and she was able to knock some, a little more seven pins out. Fair balls are important. Alita Sills says that's going to keep me in this. So 18. Taking time wiping conditioner from her ball. It's a good idea. That way you have a fresh surface each time you throw the ball. two strikes and then you leave one standing and we do the same thing on 17. And there's that seven pin she talked about. That ball right. didn't quite drive hard enough to kick out the seven. The four pin just wrapped around it. Mm -hmm. She's going to change balls here. It's a plastic ball that'll slide down the lane so it won't hook a lot. Eliminates your chance for error. And there is no error on that one. So Alita Sill opens with two strikes and two spares. Marianne Rupo leads by 12. Louisville, Kentucky is the home to Churchill Downs, site of the famous Kentucky Derby. Louisville takes pride in its thoroughbred horses. Marianne DeRupo is in the driver's seat in the early goings of our very first match. DeRupo qualifying fifth, bowling against Alita Sill here in Louisville, Kentucky. This is the fourth frame. She's working on a turkey. She's going for four in a row. Ooh, bingo. She has a really good shot on this pair. And her carry looked pretty good. I went down and practiced and watched in practice, and she was carrying out all the ten pins, the corner pins. Some of the other players weren't. To you, is that a big indicator of who's got this, uh, these lanes lit? Right now, but they do uh -huh. change pretty quickly. With all the play and the television lights, they do start to change, and, and then she could lose her carry and have to make a move. You know, we mentioned the television lights and the warmth that they create. The proprietor has really cranked the air conditioning, trying to keep the slide there, to keep the thing as cold as possible. Five bagger for Marianne DeRupo. And that temperature is such a factor in bowling, you don't realize it. Yeah, it, it's huge. Um, Alita's trailing here in Lifetime on television. Alita is 2-0 and versus Marianne DeRupo. And these two players are roommates. They travel together. Earlier we spoke with Alita Sill and she wanted to express a special sentiment for some people who mean a lot to her. Yeah, I would just like to extend my sympathies to my good friend, actually it's for me and Marianne both, um, to our ball driller, Derek Rattan and his mom. Um, his, his father just passed away about a week ago and we miss you guys and we just want to send our condolences and can't wait to get home and see you guys. We echo those sentiments. Kay Rattan, his wife. His son, Derek, we all mourn the loss of your father. And in disaster for Alita Phil, she leaves the 4 6 10 coming up high. Looks a little slow with her ball speed. Alita does, actually does not have a lot of ball speed, but it usually works for her, in particular when there's a lot of conditioner in the front part of the lane. She goes for quantity. And has an open frame in the sixth. And now Marion DeRupo has just got to keep herself steady and calm at this point. Starting with the front five. She's used to it, though. She has 14 career 300 games. 
So I wasn't going to bring that up because I don't want to, you know, the jinx factor. Yeah, well, know. I thought maybe yeah. I'd get by early. Then it doesn't count. You know, she doesn't have a 300 game in 98, though. Maybe we're looking at the first. Ouch. Oh, boy. She sure looks good. You know, she didn't have any of the high games this week. Look at this shot. She's setting it down left to 20, getting it out to about the 12th board or so, coming back strong. Tremendous carry. The folks from MasterCard are in the back room. I hear them counting those dollar bills. Do you? 50,000 of them. There you see the numbers. Look at all those X's. Leading by 54 in this X. Ooh. Oh, my. I'm getting nervous now. You're getting nervous already? Uh -oh. Yeah. There's... She still has to throw five more. This was, I know. Okay. I know. All right. But, all right. I'll try to contain myself. Okay. Just for at least one more frame. Yeah. Now, at this point, we normally would take a commercial break, but we're going to hang in there since we have a perfect game going for Marianne DeRupo. Alita Sill now finding her mark on lane 18, working off the open frame in the sixth. Well, she made a ball change there. She went to a pearlized ball. Get it down the lane a little more. Get a little more hit at the back end. And she's using the same ball on 17. Look at those career earnings, 959. She will be the first woman to win a million dollars or earn a million dollars. I think she's on pace this year. She'd have to just keep having strong finishes, but she's been bowling well all year, so it looks pretty positive for that. She has to keep making these TV finals, and she's doing a good job of that. Everything adds to the kitty. She needs $40,803. My thanks to George Smith and Kent Samuel for doing the math for us, because I was out here fast and furiously doing the subtraction. And there's 10 more events for her to get that money at. Got a couple TV shows. Don't forget, uh, incentive money's added in. and So she can get that pretty quickly. I know she was hoping for a 300 for that 50,000. And do, do it in one shot. Yeah. But here's a woman who really is hoping for 50,000 and is on her way. Seven in a row for Marianne DeRupo. If you're just joining us, this is our opening match. Marianne DeRupo qualifying fifth. She's bowling against Alita Sill. DeRupo currently seven in a row. This is number eight. She was feeling that pressure. I don't know if you just saw it, but she took a big breath before she stepped up on this approach. Number 10 stays. Oh, what a great run. I think she knew it. Yeah, that ball just oh. a little more half pocket than the others. It didn't quite drive as hard. And they just closed the vault in the MasterCard back room. <laughs> <laughs> Put the money back. Don't go anywhere. There's a few more matches. She's changing balls to shoot her 10 pin. First time we've seen her pick up this ball. So seven baggers and a spare. Mary Andrupa crosses over to 17 and tightens the grip. She goes back to her strike posture, I'll call it. Well, I guess she decided after losing twice to her roommate on TV that she was going to take care of business early. One of those losses being at the U.S. Open. Sixty-three pounds. Two frames to go. And she's back in the groove with strikes in eight of the nine frames she has bowled so far. We will continue with the Lady Ebonite Classic, but first, these messages. Welcome back. You are looking at Alita Sill of Dearborn, Michigan, as she steps up in the ninth frame working on a spare. And that's certainly the best thing you can do off a spare is clear the deck. Is a 156 score plus the strike. Yeah, I bet she can shoot is 216. The match is already over. Alita's going to finish fifth. But she is having a great year, as we said. She's cashed in every event this year. And that's pretty unusual. There's not very many players who have done that. And we'll add the $2,800 to her earnings. And that shot was very weak on 17. 
at this point, it doesn't really matter. She's not lining up for another match. She's done. So she's just throwing it, trying to get out of the way. And you still have your pride at stake, but, you know, sometimes you don't concentrate like you should when a match is over. Alita still has already won twice in 1998. She's the only woman to, woman to win the Triple Crown twice. In fact, she's the only bowler to win the Triple Crown twice. And she will sit down as number five at the Lady Ebonite Classic, a 184 final. Marianne used a lot of equipment this week, eight to ten bowling balls trying to stay consistent. And I think she's on one tonight. It's going to work great for her. Once again, it is number 10 who hangs in there. She did that in the 8th frame, and she's doing it now in the 10th. Cause for concern? No, I, I don't think so. She may be just testing. Conditioner may be carrying down a little bit. She may have to make a few slight adjustments, but I don't see any major changes yet in her ball reaction. Two forty-nine plus the pin count. And we'll recap the scoring of this first match. She's going to climb the ladder. Her next opponent is Dee Dee Davidson, and we'll set that up when we come back. We are back at the Executive Bowl for the Lady Ebonite Classic. It is Marianne DeRupo against Dee Dee Davidson, and Dee Dee says, hey, Marianne, you went number one before. You're going to go number one again. So she'll start things off in our second match. She defeated Alita Sill, 259 to 184. A great score. Great way to start. Started with the first seven strikes. She looks great. Let's see if she can start it that way again. From your mouth to her fingertips. Ooh. Didn't know I had that much power. <laughs> Dee Dee Davidson is our tallest bowler this evening at 5'9". We don't have a particularly wide range of bowlers from 5'5 five, five to 5'9". Five, They're all within four inches of each other, but she is the first lefty we are seeing. Ooh, and there's that corner pin, the seven pin. Again, carry going to be the key. Dee Dee said they were pretty similar to her in this pair as they were all week in the morning conditions. She said the warm-up pair she warmed up on was very different, but this pair was very similar, so she expected to score well. She is wearing a microphone, so you will hear her comment. Good start. Good start. The spare, she crosses over, and she's tickled that uh, Dan and Wanda Dewitt have opted to sponsor her again. That is so important on this tour where you really have no control over your finances, and it's just so helpful to have that sponsorship. There you see the number. She's already met Marianne DeRupo, 225 to 214. She was the winner of that play. But none of that matters, and she knew the minute it left her hand. She was saying, fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. <laughs> now, Marianne DeRupo, not watching a thing, and that is her modus operandi. She does not like to watch the other bowler. She concentrates solely on herself. Tough to pick up. Ooh. That is tough to pick up, but she gave it a good run. Great run, getting four pins on that, and sometimes that can be important, that extra pin. Marianne DeRupo has won already once this year in Omaha, Nebraska. She is pursuing her second title of 1998, her sixth title of her career, should she win tonight. There's that 10 pin on lane 18 again. That was a better shot though. The six pin flew around the 10. Ball was driving pretty aggressive. You may see her though, that's, that's three 10 pins in a row. She may make a little bit of a move on 18. Either try and just get a little more roll on it, catch it a little more with her fingers, or she may make a subtle move with her feet, forward, back, left, right. There's a lot of options to try to keep out of 10 pins. And she makes the conversion 
We pointed out that she doesn't watch her competitor, so we asked her, why do you not look at them and learn something from the lane? Well, there's a lot of reasons why I don't watch my opponents during the telecast. I'm concentrating on what I need to do. I'm concentrating on my keys, and a lot of times players don't have the same keys as me. Also, if they happen to get a break and I happen to be struggling, that puts a little extra pressure on myself. So I just want to stay in my own little zone and uh, stay focused on the keys that I'm working on. Interesting point when she elaborated on that to us last night when we spoke to her about not watching. She said she's more of a free bowler. She doesn't like to watch people who are mechanical. That right. really disrupts her. Yeah, and it does. Sometimes you watch a player, they're so hard or soft, and you kind of go that direction subconsciously, mm -hmm. and you don't want to. So it's a very good point she makes. I also appreciated her, her honesty about, don't ask me about my third step and things like that as we take another look. Beauty. Lane 17, she struck every time on mm -hmm. 17. Now we're back to Dee Dee Davidson. Now, is she a mechanical bowler? Would you describe her that way? No. She's working on a real free yeah. loose arm swing. That's that's right. that has been a key for her office, trying to keep that arm swing loose. She has been plagued this year with what I'll call minor nagging injuries. You know, stuff where she wants to take a couple of aspirin or something like that after the match because her, her knees would ache, her neck, shoulder. Oh, yeah, I could go on and on about some chronic joint problems. But she said uh, her knees don't bother her if the slide is good. And the slide this week has been great, so she said she feels great. Yeah, great bowling center in really good condition. We've all been able to fly really well. Hello. Yeah. Hello. All right, Dee Dee Davidson puts two in a row up there and gets herself back into things. Marianne DeRupo stepping up. Strike, spare, strike sums up her first three frames. Now, you mentioned what a great house this is. My goodness, it is. Everybody's been so pleased at their first visit here in Louisville, Kentucky. Hats off to the executive bowl for really doing a stand-up job. Sonny France, the proprietor, what a great job he's done. 52 Lane Center here, and anything we needed, he was there for us. And Marianne DeRupo really likes this house. Yeah, she she's, does. She's storming through it. If we continue to come here, it could be another thing like Omaha for her. Watch how she drops this ball. This is her start. Look how she's dropping it. She's dropping it until she feels the weight on her left hand. Then she's going to push off with her left hand, not her right. That enables her arm to be relaxed and open up like that in the back of her back of her swing and come through aggressively. She's trying to keep that arm relaxed. This is what happens when she does. If she grips it a little bit, gets a little bit mechanical, she probably won't carry, and that may be what's been happening on the 10-pin. But by taking the strain off her right arm with her left arm, her right arm's been more relaxed. Well, she's lucky that fell because she could have had a split there, but it isn't what she wanted to do. You know, that you discussed the push away there, and that was an adjustment she made specifically this week during practice. She, she changed that push away. She did, and that, something new. TV pair, average 219. You don't see a player pushing the ball away with their other hand too often, but you do put a strain on your right arm sometimes. You can see it there. She pushes up with her left hand. And again, she's perfect when it comes to conversion. So she is a spare in the fifth as Dee Dee Davidson steps up, working on two strikes in the third and fourth for the fifth frame. She is down 15 to Marianne DeRupo. Dee Dee Davidson wants to say hi to her twin sister, Marissa, and her other sister, Maria. Family support is important. Come on, go down. Ooh, it went down for <laughs> that was different pin carry. Watch the yes. ball. Enter the pocket. A little bit half pocket. It's starting to drive there. There it goes. Kind of half pocket. The five dice is over. Dee has a four step approach. Real free loose arm swing. Look at that back swing way over her head. That's where she generates her power and her speed. A lot of ladies do it with their legs. Dee Dee does it with her arm swing. She's narrowed it down to just five pins. And now Dee Dee Davidson has put the pressure on Marianne DeRupo as she dials in lane 17 and 18 here at the Executive Bowl. The cultural portion of Louisville revolves around the Center for the Arts featuring ballet, the Louisville Symphony, and the Actors Theater.
Welcome back to the Lady Ebonite Classic. Couldn't be done without these folks. These are volunteers, and we also have some Pro-Am winners in the mix. You know, we look at this bowling tournament as being a one-night affair, being on television, but it's really a week-long affair, and couldn't do it without the volunteers. Our hats off to them. All right, the pendulum has swung the other way for Marianne DeRupa. At one point, she was up by 15, 16, actually, and now she is down by 5. So the pressure's on her for the first time tonight, really, for the meter match. Ooh, and trying to kick out that 10-pin, ball driving a little hard. She leaves the 4-pin. She could have tripped it out. Oftentimes, when you see a pin go off the wall, she'll trip it. Watch this ball. It's going to drive real hard, high on the head pin. Mm -hmm. Came back on the Off the wall, yeah, 4-pin rocking, but didn't fall. It came through the 7 and 4 and only took the 7 out. All right, so in this game, she has left the 10, the 9, and the 4. Is that a little frustrating? I mean, it's one thing to keep leaving the 10 and leaving the 10 and leaving the 10, but we've seen three different pins now. Right, yeah, mm -hmm. and that may be because she's making subtle moves, made a move to carry the 10, and the ball drove a little bit hard. So I'm sure she's trying to dial in, especially lane 18. She's only missed once on 17. Now she's uh, gone for the re-rack. I would say the three pins a little bit off spot. It looks like the pocket was wide. She's going to leave a 10-pin with a wide pocket a lot of times. Marianne DeRupo has uh, five career titles. In 1998, she has cashed 12 or 14 times, top five, three times. It's been one of them. And there's a four-pin. Apparently, the lane's maybe starting to break down a little bit now. Ball's driving a little too hard. See how the ball's coming in? It's going to come in high on the head pin. Look at that. Almost on the nose. Fortunate to get the nine pin out and not have a four nine. She may have to start making little moves to her left. And she's converted all of her spares this evening, but she wants strikes, and she needs strikes. And Dee Dee Davidson steps up in the seventh frame, working on four in a row. Edie having a pretty good year also, nine caches in 13 events. Five top fives, though. That's big for Dee. For anyone. Hit it, hit it. Oh, I got a little too much oil there. Well, you heard her say hit it, hit it, a little too much oil there. Mm, exactly. Hit some oil, some conditioner, and the ball didn't drive. She's been working with a lot of different equipment. Also wants to thank uh, Rusty's Pro Shop for the drilling they've done for her and her coach, Gip Lentine, for all his help. Dee Dee is one who definitely steps up and thanks everyone who's helped her. That's a good thing to see because you, you don't get there without the help of a lot of other people. You can't do this alone. You absolutely cannot. Too many details. The lead narrows to six. So it's anyone's match at this point. She crosses over for the eighth frame, working on a spare after four in a row. This time, Marianne DeRupo is looking, not really so much at the bowling. At right, what? right, exactly. She wasn't watching Marianne. She was looking at her rack on lane 18. She's going to be up next on that lane, mm -hmm. and she was leaning over to get a good line to see if the pins were on spot. lined up for Dee Dee Davidson on 17 as once again she knocks them all down. That is her fifth strike so far. Marianne DeRupo has only had three strikes so far in this match. She's working on a spare in the seventh. Three spares in a row for DeRupo. She needs to find a way to start to carry. She is right there. I mean, she is off by an eighth of an inch at the pins. <laughs> Looks like, she did, looks like she did the right thing. It just didn't have the right result. Yeah, she, she trusted it, gave it room, but it didn't really hit quite hard enough. A little bit half in the pocket, halfway between the head pin and the three pin here. See how the six pin wraps around the ten. Great view of the pinfall there. Once again, she converts. So Marianne DeRupo has the pressure on her as she steps up in the ninth frame. Her maximum score, 226. 
It's close. Yeah. And right now, there isn't a whole lot she can do. You can see she's yeah. making little moves, changing her target a bit, changing her roll a bit. But right now, the pins aren't falling. She really hasn't missed the pocket in two games. No. See, I would find this very frustrating. Ah, there we go. She needed that. Well, you and a lot yeah. of people at home. Yeah. That's everyone finds it frustrating. You're, you're, you're doing it right and... Uh. Okay, there's the maximum score for Dee Dee Davidson, who is working on a strike in the eighth frame. She's up in the ninth. 243, she punches out. She'll be able to shut out Marianne DeRupo here if she can strike in the ninth and get the first one in the ten. Hit it, hit it, hit it, yes! So far, she's looking at the numbers. Now with a light mixer. Can I re-rack, please? And here she's asking for re -rack. This was her last shot. Head pin off the wall, taking out the ten and the six. She then studied the scoreboard, looked down the lane at 17 and said, I want to re-rack. Here's the numbers. Dee Dee Davidson score on the bottom of your screen. She had four strikes in a row, third through the sixth frame, then a spare in the seventh. Now, two in a row. She moves into the tenth. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Door's open. That was lucky. She's happy to have left the three pin only. Terrible shot. She missed way left with that shot. She said I was lucky. She was. She knew it. Look at this. She fell off the shot. Look at her. Looked like she kept sliding. Had to put her foot down to stop herself. Fell off her shot. Sometimes on a pressure shot, your feet get moving just a little bit fast. The timing gets a little bit off. not looking now but did look up after that first shot just to see the result not so much the bowling well Marianne is going to be able to win no matter what he does here on her kill ball Marianne's going to need a double in order to win a double and some good pin count boy that's pressure especially when you've had you know four spares in a row and finally you get a strike and you're doing everything right okay. Phil. 221, the score to beat. Two strikes plus six. And it's it. on lane 18. That's the lane she's had trouble, really, since the eighth frame of the first game. She's had a lot of trouble carrying on this lane. In fact, she's only carried once since the sixth frame of the first game. And now she needs to find a way to throw two. Oh, there's one. Wow, and she oh, just oh, got oh, that, that pin. <laughs> that was a pin burr. Here we go. Six pin wrap. Mm. Caught it. Just caught it. Going to start to turn over here. Is it going to drive enough? Watch the six pin off the wall. It caught it the bottom of back. it. Just look at this. It, yep. Watch the third pin over from the head pin. Look at it go around. Catch it's it from the, the back. And then tipped it over. Yep. A strike in six. Does she know that? Oh, yeah. I think, I think she does. Because she doesn't look up a lot. She just seems well, to want to concentrate on her mechanics. Yeah, yeah well, especially after scoring last week. Dee Davidson not watching. Oh. And that ball didn't drive at all. Dee Dee Davidson's not reacting. She looks up now. I guess you could tell by the groans that it wasn't a strike, so. So a fourth place finish for Marianne DeRupo. A dramatic finish at that as Marianne DeRupo sit down as number four here in Louisville, Kentucky. Coming up, ask the pro. You'll want to hear it. Miller and Dee Dee Davidson. It is Dee Dee Davidson who is going to go first. The choice was Kim. She opted to bowl second. There's the final score, 221 to 215, as she eliminated Marianne DeRupo in our second match. This is our third. The battle for third place.
between Judy and Kim. Oh, it took a long time, but the result was right. Ten pin tumbling at the last second. Kim Adler is our smallest bowler, standing 5'5". Five, five. She is 30 years old and calls Las Vegas, Nevada her home. Dee Dee Davidson is our tallest bowler at 5'9". Familiar concentration we saw last week as she climbed the ladder. And what a week it was last week as she opens with a strike to go from five to one, ouch, and then to win it by one pin at the end. These are all clues, America. Which one of tonight's finalists has won a tournament in each of the last six years? Kim Adler. Now, who owns the record? Lisa Wagner. In fact, Lisa Wagner's sitting next to me in the booth. She, she raised her eyebrows. She didn't know that. Yep, you own that record. 83 to 91. She won a tournament in each one of those years. Nine straight years. And on the men's side, though, Earl Anthony holds that record with 14 consecutive years. But David, David Ozio. Ozio. He's yeah. getting close. 12 years. And he's active and it's still running. So that's a jeopardy, possibly. Oh, the 10 stays in the second frame. Yeah, there's Lisa Wagner now. Hey, congratulations. I'll pat you on the back. <laughs> I would too, but I can't reach you. Sorry, Lee. Kim leaving a 10 pin. She's going to change balls here. Shoot or spare. What a year 1998 has been for her with six television appearances. She won in Chattanooga. She won twice in 1997 in Memphis and in Vegas. And she converts in the second frame as Didi Davidson steps up on lane 18. Didi Davidson won the St. Clair Classic in 1998. That was in Fairview Heights, Illinois. Prior to that, a little bit of a drought. 1993's U.S. Open. Right. That marked her first victory in five years. It was a big milestone for her, and I think it boosted her for the rest of this year. Because she's just been oh, That's what I'm talking about. She's getting some strange pin action, but who cares? They're all going down. She says, that's what I'm talking about. This ball coming in really light. Watch the head pin off the wall. Coming back, taking the 6, the 10, and the 9. That was a busy pin. She's been getting some good pin count this week. She was 299 over. So she has this place locked. Kim Adler now, another bowler who did well, 379 over. Right. We're talking about during the last eight games of match play you're mentioning, which had Kim averaging 247 last night and Dee Dee averaging 238 last night for the last round of match play. Huge. Both of these players wanted second place. They knew first place was gone, but they wanted second. Kim coming in light. Now, this is a player who's opposite of Dee Dee. I said Dee Dee generated her power with a high backswing. Kim generates her power with her legs. She has a low backswing. She has a five-step approach. Watch the backswing. Only about waist high right here. That's it. But look at the long, strong slide. Look at that. All that leg power generates speed for Kim Adler. Both bowlers bowling 16-pound balls. Occasionally, Adler says she'll go to a 15, but that's interesting considering their size difference. Now, in this pair, her average is just over 234. That's a nice number. Ah, again, the light touch, but getting it done. Ooh. Just slapping out that 10. And her 234 for her TV pair average. Again, a respectable number. Dee Dee Davidson's last TV title at the St. Clair Classic. The victory was over Alita Sill. The side of 237. Hit on it. On Come on, man. So it's four in a row for Dee Dee Davidson. And I told you, she's loose, she's having fun, and she's wearing a mic. <laughs> Which makes us very happy because we can hear her. Fourth TV appearance in the last seven tournaments. In Omaha, she finished fourth. In Danville, she finished fifth. Of course, Fairview Heights, she won. And now here. Hook up, hook up. Uh -oh. 
she knew right from the get go. Let's make it. That's what she's telling herself. She has two options to make this spare. She's left the three, five, ten. All coming in light here. Really light. Barely touching the head pin. Mm -hmm. Head pin off the wall. Took out the six. Six toppled and took out the nine. She either needs to have the ball hit the right side of the three pin and take out the ten, or the ball hit the left side of the three pin and the three would slide over and take out the ten. Two ways to pick it up. Come on, get them both. Thank oh, you. She did. That way works. Yep, worked real well for her. This is probably the safest way to pick it up because she's catching the three and the ten with the ball, and you know the three is going to take out the five pin. Could the ball break across? Is it easier for a lefty to do it that way? The way she did it? Yeah. Well, a righty wouldn't leave that spare. That's right true. Yeah, the other side, it would spare. come in that way. Yeah. Although I think I've left that. Well, <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Don't challenge me. Three in a row for Kim Adler. So four of the first five frames are filled with strikes for Adler, yet she trails by seven. Dizzy Davidson opening with four in a row before she spared in the fifth. She had a lot of trouble with her footing on that shot for some reason. A little bit off time, maybe. Uh, slipped a little or stuck a little and looked down. And oftentimes it is a player player will get off time, wait a little forward or wait a little back can affect your slide also. But she kept her arm on, on target and was able to strike. It's nice. Come on, 10. Oh, I don't believe that. Messenger, that pin came from out of nowhere, rolled over and knocked it down. Hey, the River City of Louisville is not just about culture and horses, it's about brains as well. It's home to four universities, 16 community colleges, and many businesses and technical schools. We have talked about some of these sites and attractions in Louisville, Kentucky. Well, this evening, the biggest attraction is women's professional bowling, uh -oh. because it doesn't get any better than this, as Dee Dee Davidson has now struck in five of six frames. She is one hot bowler tonight. Oh, she said, uh-oh, she's asking for a re-rack here. She trailed by three. She thought she didn't make the greatest shots there. She pulled it a little bit. Dee Dee Davidson is pumped, relaxed, and for the first time in five years, she's wearing a microphone to share her enthusiasm. Oh, I'm just going to go out and try to run a little bit out and try to get the audience a little bit more in involved. Uh, basically, we're going to have a big crowd here tonight, and uh, I haven't worn a mic since the uh, U.S. Open in 93, and I won there, so maybe maybe it's uh, good luck. Oh, well, that wasn't lucky. No good luck there. It's getting Come, tougher to make. Up light again. <laughs> getting tougher to make, she said. <laughs> getting tougher to make. The spare she's leaving. Oh. She left the 3 5 10 last time. Coming light again. Basically the same shot. Just touching the head pin here. Ball finishing too late. Leaving the three seven. She wants to hit the three pin almost the same way she did last time on the right side. Hook it, hook it, hook it. Oh. oh my goodness! What a shot by Dee Dee Davidson! Holy mackerel! Off the back wall, off the corner. You very rarely see this. Watch the three pin off the back wall, off the side wall, and out to hit the seven pin. That's like a billiard shot. Playing the angles here in bowling. Even Kim Adler had to admire that, but she said, don't count me out. She's up by 13. Five she's in a row for Adler. She's trying to keep herself pumped up after that. Five strikes in a row for Kim Adler as we are in our third match here at the Lady Ebonite Classic in Louisville, Kentucky. Dee Dee Davidson just had a remarkable spare, and she is all pumped up as one usually is not after a split, but she bounced some pins off the wall, the three pin, and just really kept herself in the ball game. Kim Adler, meanwhile, has just been as steady as they come, strike after strike, and the string has come to an end. Coming up light, leaving a two pin, but an easy spare. And she's up by 13. I'm Leander Riley along with Jan Schmidt, Lisa Wagner, our scorekeeper, and 
Carol and Dawn Ballard in the truck doing our stats. And this has been a good climb for Dee Dee Davidson. She defeated Marianne DeRupo to step up to Kim Adler, our number two qualifier. Bears it up, no problem. That is only her second spare of the match, converting on both of them. Dee Dee Davidson coming off that remarkable spare pickup in the seventh frame has got to be psyched here in the eighth. Her maximum score is 257, so this is really a wide open match still, even though we're running out of frames. But it's not good. Not good. That's not good, though. I let go of it. She's doing the commentary for us. She knew it as soon as she let go. She told us that if she starts to muscle the ball, and doesn't let her arm swing be free and loose, she'll pull it. She said, if you see me pull the ball on the show, I'm muscling the ball and I'm grabbing it. She probably knew that halfway through her swing. Changing balls to shoot the spare. And again, successfully converts it. It's interesting, her game day ritual, she opts to get up and take in a little culture. She went to Churchill Downs. She wanted to go to the Louisville Slugger Factory. She did sightseeing while she was out and about this morning. Other bowlers prefer to just, you know, sit back, relax, and think about what lies ahead. Well, sometimes when you visit all these cities and you never get a chance to see anything, so she thought, hey, I'm going to go out and relax at the time. Nice shot. Nice shot. Yes! Well, she knew from the minute it left her hand that that was a good one. Kim Adler working off a spare in the eighth. Had a nice string going of five strikes in the middle. Now steps up in the ninth. Her maximum score is 259. Yeah, the best Dee Dee can do is 245. So Kim can shut out Dee Dee here in the ninth and tenth. And they need a strike here and a strike in the 10th. There's one. She had good roll on that ball. It hit half, half pocket, but it blew the pins out. Half pocket, look at that. But watch the five pin, dice over into the seven. Got a little help there out of the channel. Okay, with a strike right here and good pin count, she's going to shut out Dee Dee Davidson. The woman who responds to pressure last week responds to pressure again this week. She beat Carolyn Doran Ballard last week to win in Chattanooga by a pin. This week she needed a strike and some good count here. To shut out Dee Dee Davidson to move up to meet our number one qualifier. She still needs nine pins right here on this ball in order to not have to throw another ball. Now, she was in this situation two weeks ago uh, trying to make the show, and she threw a six count. There's her husband, Tommy Adler. He was telling her how much she needed. And she needs to hit the pocket. She needed nine. She got nine. That's enough. That's an, I know, for, for someone who got what they needed, she's not too happy. I think she's disappointed that she didn't find her mark and get the strike. And oh! Now she was testing a, st a strike target. She oh, okay. Trying. So a third place finish for Dee Dee Davidson, $4,000 to her yearly growth, as she is eliminated by Kim Adler, who climbs the ladder. It is time for our championship match at the 1998 Lady Ebonite Classic here in Louisville, Kentucky. Michelle Feldman and Kim Adler, and Feldman is the top qualifier, has the choice to bowl first. And she takes that choice. She said, I'm going up first. I guess she wants to finish last, or she likes lane 18 better and wants a 10th frame on 18. Oh. Oh, well, that kills all dialogue about bowling 300 on television again. Wow. The, the absolute worst split you can have is how she opens things up.
We saw it last week. Carolyn Doran Ballard left this in the 10th. We see her ball come in, half pocket, head pin blowout, five pin went behind the seven, six pin late in the channel. Carolyn Doran Ballard left it to lose the match. Kamada stepped up, spare struck to one to win. Let's see if this affects Michelle Feldman. What a rough way to start things out. There's a the score, 247 to 222. That describes how Kim Adler advanced to this championship match. Unusual for Kim Adler to be the benefactor of the 7th in the championship match yes. two weeks in a row. Yes. And she opens with a strike. When she shot that 379 over, we talked about 247 average last night. She went 8-0 and in match play. First time ever. She's asking for a re-rack there. Pretty tough to see. I don't really see anything that looks real bad. But I'm sure she does from down there. And you see her efforts on lane 17 and 18. She likes lane 18 better. With the five strikes there. All strikes on 18. That could yeah. be why Michelle Feldman chose to start. Because Kim will have to finish on lane 17. Which is the worst of her two lanes. Kim Adler is 8 and 1 in championship Whoa. matches. Oh my goodness. Did that thing go out? Something happened with the footing there. She's wiping off her foot. Slipped My out. goodness, the pressure is certainly on. The, the huge split by Feldman to open things up. Adler losing her footing. Is this a case of the yips? I don't think so. I, she just had a little bit of problem on the approach. It, maybe she stepped in something. Maybe she got a little fast with her feet. I don't know. She's working on a strike, though, so if she can spare it up, the five count won't hurt her. Ooh. The ball didn't the hit. You wanted. So both women with an open frame in the championship match. And Michelle Feldman saying, thank you for miracles. Well, now, Michelle says she's always qualified first or second or nothing. So she either has a shot that she can dominate on because she's so powerful. Or she has a shot where she just gets in jail in trouble. Now she's back on track. You know, she qualified once before as the number one seed and she won it she talked about how she's left of everyone look where she's setting that down in about 35 way out to about 10 yeah. coming back so much pin action for her she has four career television appearances one in every year that she's been on the tour one in 95 one in 96 one in 97 she was on once before in 1998 so she seems to have settled down after the opening frame and that was just a terrible break. She has a great shot out there on the lanes. She told me right before they started. It is still just like Danville. Great shot. She's had it all week. Kim Adler said that um, earlier this season she had widened her grip. But now she's seeing a little wear on her finger. And she may come back in a quarter. Yeah, sometimes when you change your grip, it can affect your hands. You can get some splitting or some blistering. So she's going to shorten it up just a hair. Probably more like a sixteenth of an inch is all she's going to come back with it. Leaves a tenth in there. She's going to cover it up. As I was mentioning, she went 8 no in match play last night. First time she's ever done that, and it was the highest block she's ever shot. 379 over. It was beautiful bowling last night. As we look at her husband, Tommy. Other qualifiers. In the top 24, look at Carolyn Doran Ballard. This is the seventh time this year she has been in the top 10. Not bad for 1998. In 10th, Tammy Eisworth back into the finals. Number 12, Brenda Edwards. We saw her make her t TV debut two weeks ago. And Jody Ellis of South Africa. Nine out of 13 events that she's entered this year, she has cashed in. Ooh, and a light mixer for Kim Adler. Big break on that shot. Michelle Feldman open in the first two strikes for two and three. Now leads by 13, stepping up on lane number 18. This is our championship match. Woo, that ball. came back high. Yeah, ball coming high. Oh, uh -oh. That's the problem. Uh-oh. Gary Feldman's here. 
she said he what? wasn't here all week. She said he wasn't Changes allowed in the my, building. Yep. Changes my karma if they come in at the end. They have to be there for the whole thing or none of it. Exactly. She said when she won both times, they were here the whole week. The other time she was up there, they weren't here and they came to the show and she lost. Yes. Well, now that we've explained that away, <laughs> maybe they can break that cycle. But she's very thankful for all their help yes. out here. Absolutely. Look at the score here. Open, strike, strike, spare. And she's all smiles about that spare. She's happier here for the strike. That's her grandpa. Yes, got that spare. That was her reaction to the shot prior to the strike. He was happy. A little swagger in her walk. Well, she's a big strike ball player. She's not really the best spare ball, sh you know, spare shooter. Her game is strikes. That's what she does. She well, Adler leaves the 10 for the second time in this match. Trailing by 10. It has gone strike, open frame, spare strike. And hopefully a spare here. Messenger came across, but didn't take out the 10. She defeated Michelle Feldman twice. Look at those numbers, 255. And then she bowls a 269. Of course, it was a done deal for Feldman then. In fact, we spoke with her about her phenomenal play last night, and how do you keep a role like that going? Well, I really tried to deal with it in an intellectual way. Um, being down there on the lanes, I was really trying to concentrate on each shot um, the adjustments I needed to make on each lane, and then coming back and, and sitting down and, and really thinking through throwing a good shot. And that's really all I focused on last night. And when it was over, I couldn't believe it was over. It went by very quickly. And um, somebody told me how much I shot over. I couldn't believe it. I really hadn't added it up. I hadn't thought about it until I was done. So Kim Adler showing her veteran experience 30 years of age. This is her ninth season. Michelle Feldman, just 22, will be back. This is Michelle Feldman. She leads by 10 here in the championship match. That is her shot in the sixth frame. Number 10 remains stubbornly upright. She really needed to carry that to start breaking away from Kim Adler. Now she remains in a 10-pin lead with a spare. Not as easy as the last title we saw her win when she did nothing but strike. All the way on television, January 10th, 1997. It was how we opened the show. This lady, she did it at age 21. She's now the ripe old age of 22. The rest of the finishers in 18th, Lilia Johnson. She really works hard on her game. Good for her. And in 19th, Allison Allman cashed in the last three events. And Sandra Jo Item. Odom, it's the ninth time she's been in the top 24. In fact, 12 out of 14 events she has cashed. Used to be Sandra Jo Shirey. I was trying to say Item Odom at the same time. Sandra Jo got married. And now she's Sandra Jo Odom. Another 10 pin, and this is something we didn't see out of Michelle all week. She was blowing pins all over the place. Now having trouble getting the corners out. Having a good year, but not having a good game right now. Neither lady is really taken control of this match and it's been a little different from earlier matches here at the Lady of the Night Classic. Lane conditions have changed. The pressure is certainly on. This is for the championship. Now Adler's gap is down to minus nine. Well, I'll tell you, when she fell out of that show in Danville, as I mentioned earlier, with that six count to not make the show, she said last time she had trouble with something like that, she went on to win back-to-back -back titles. She came back after that one last week. Can she do it again? Again, this... Coming yeah. high. Yeah. Her, she's fortunate not to have a split. Yes. Her ball hasn't been finishing hard enough. She tried to make a move to get it to drive harder, and she's actually dead on the nose. Three pin comes in off the wall. Looks like the nine, nine pin came split in over and, and took out and the helped ten. it out. Only three strikes for Adler through seven frames. This 
would be her second time for back-to-back -back titles if she wins. And our first back-to-back -back of 98. But this match is anything but a done deal. Both women seem to be struggling here. She won at that time. Kim Adler did in Canton, Michigan, and then in Rockford, Illinois. Rockford being the Hammer Players Championship. And then went on the next tournament, which was the Samsung Invitational, to make the show, but finish up in third. 20 and 4, a great match play competitor. Is Throughout the week. Those are Adler's numbers for the week, yeah. Well, she seems to have locked in number 17 here in the late going. She said yesterday that, uh, I'm talking about Kim Adler, she watched herself on TV winning, and it motivated her because it was a tape replay, and she got to catch it. Michelle Feldman says to her, the title was more important than the money. When we asked her if she was going to go for the uh, $50,000 in the perfect game, she said, oh, I'd rather have the title any day. Of course, you and I both said, take the money. Yeah, the money. <laughs> I, I would, but, you know, she's young. She's going for records yet. Yeah. She's, she's trying to win titles. I asked her if she was happy with her career. As you see, she leads by nine with two frames left. Uh, she says she's about 80% happy. Um, she wants to make more like five to seven shows a year. Her goal is to make four shows this year. The second show, once again, for the third time in this, fourth time in this match, we see that ten... Just can't get the 10 pin to fall. She really needed a strike there. Now the best she can shoot would be 205. She's run out of frame. Kim Adler's going to be able to shut her out because Kim Adler can go off the sheet for 216. Well, her spare conversions have been great this evening. No complaints there, but as you mentioned, she is a strike ball bowler. I guess in this match, you'd have to give that distinction to Kim Adler. One, two, three, four strikes in the match. Feldman has the same number, four. They both have four, but Kim Adler hasn't struck on this lane since the first frame of this game. If she wants to be able to shut out Michelle Feldman, she needs a strike right here. That was a huge shot. She just needs to know what she needs. And she seems to do it. Picks up the speed here, gets the ball to drive through the pin, slapping out the 10. Yes. That's her husband, Tommy, watching the ball go down the lane. Okay, okay. He looks more nervous than she does. Say when the pressure is on. I want her in the bunker with me, you know, okay? The enemy's coming at me. This gal is steel under fire. I think she's going to need two strikes here to shut out Michelle. At least she pulled that one. high. She is one lucky bowler. She is. That was dead on the nose again. Fortunate to break up the split that was left of her target all the way from the very beginning. Not what we're used to seeing out of Kim Adler when she needs it. Watch this. Almost going Brooklyn. Starting to shift over to the left. Everything tumbling over on the left side, fortunate just to leave a six pin. Mm -hmm. And we could end up with a tie here. Her fill ball is going to be very important here because if she strikes, it would be 195. Michelle mm -hmm. Feldman would go strike spare for 195 to tie. This pin count huge to force a strike out of Michelle Feldman. Michelle Feldman hasn't had a strike since the eighth frame, and then it was two frames before that. So striking out is going to be a difficult task. Wow. That one way wide. Never came back for her. Now that count was so big. Really big. Too. Right, Michelle Feldman now does not even need a strike. She can go nine spare nine to win. She doesn't even have to strike here. Taking her time, looking down at 18. Comes back high. 
Bernard takes him out. There's one. Seven pins and she ties. She needs eight pins on eight two away. balls. That strike, yeah. very big. Eight what pins on two balls. That that was a huge pressure reliever for Michelle Feldman. And it was going high. She tripped out the 410 at the last second. Yes, they came down rather late. Well, she got her eight and then some, didn't she? What was it I said? It's going to be difficult for her to put strikes back to back. When the pressure was off, he said, hey, that's my granddaughter, Michelle Feldman. You should be proud, Grandpa. She's done it tonight. Michelle Feldman, the winner. We'll be back. Classic is brought to you by Ebonite. With Ebonite, you bowl to win. By Budweiser and Bud Light, the official beers of bowling. By MasterCard. There are some things in life money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. And by AMF Bowling Worldwide, the largest owner and operator of bowling centers in the world and one of the leading makers of bowling products. AMF always means fun. <laughs> Our final score, 205 to 192. Michelle Feldman, the champion, the winner here in Louisville. Now let's go to Bill Scheid, president of Ebonite, with a check presentation. Michelle, on behalf of all the associates of Ebonite, I want to congratulate you on a great tournament. And now Sonny France. The executive bowls proprietor and a former president of the BPAA has a presentation. Michelle, I'm pleased to announce that Governor Patton has commissioned you as a Kentucky Colonel. And also, on behalf of Executive Bowl, Ebonite, all the great fans and volunteers, here's your championship trophy. Congratulations. Um, I'd just like to thank Phil and um, Alice Ebonite and uh, Storm and my friends and family I came to watch. Congratulations, Michelle. A job well done. 22 years old, a winner in 96, 97, and now a winner in 1998. Be sure to join us next week when we go to Terre Haute, Indiana for the Clabber Girl Greater Terre Haute Open. That'll be televised on Tuesday, August 18th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. For Jan Schmidt, I'm Leandra Roddy. Congratulations once again to our Michelle Feldman. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.